We're reacting to a woke barber who has publicly announced and gone viral that she will not serve cops or any members of law enforcement in her hair salon. We don't provide services to police officers. We're going to talk about it today. Hi, I'm Eddie Hairstylist in Portland, Oregon. I've had to enforce this rule recently. And I wanted to talk about it because I want people to know the why behind it. I am one of many people I know that don't provide their services, whether it be hair or something else, to people who participate in law enforcement. So that's not only police officers, but maybe that is um, guards in prisons and people that work for ICE and things like that. Hold up. You know many people that have this policy? <laughs> we must live on different planets or different universes. But actually, she said she lives in Portland, so that kind of makes sense. I would like to take a quick second to say that uh, the things I'm about to express are my beliefs and why I choose to do this. That might not be why everybody chooses to do this, uh, but this is why I choose to do it this way. The reason I want to talk about it is because recently that rule was enforced and I think that when people hear that oh. rule, they think that it's like a FU rule. I personally yeah, don't like it. Kind of seems so like it. I'm not going to provide service to them because meh. But that's actually not the reason. There are plenty of people who I do not agree with on many topics that I will still provide hair services to. It is not a prerequisite for me that you agree with everything that I think to come get your hair done by me. Oh, However, of one you. of the things I absolutely want to prioritize is the mental health and safety of all of my clients. Oh, God. I see where she's going with this. This is that safe space nonsense again, as if minorities are these fragile little beings that can shatter in the presence of any person or thought or word that offends them. In this chair, all textures are welcome, all gender expressions are welcome, no matter who you are. I am going to try my darndest, though I am only a human, to make this space uh, accessible to you. And being dedicated to showing up like that for my clients can look uh, a lot of different ways. For me, it looks like making sure that I spent money and time and education on learning how to cut all different textures of hair. I make sure I'm vocal about things that I believe in that are important to me. And one of those things, yes, does mean not allowing members of law enforcement to be in my space. Not just because I don't like them, not even most importantly for that reason. Okay, so she basically did just admit that she just hates people who work in law enforcement. And I love how concerned she is about making everything accessible to all people, just not the ones who do jobs she doesn't like. <laughs> I find this attitude towards law enforcement really unfortunate, even as somebody who's, you know, pretty skeptical of the current system. I think it's pretty messed up. I'm a big supporter of criminal justice reform. And obviously, there are lots of bad police officers in this country and in every country, but particularly seems to be uh, an issue in the U.S. system. But there's lots of good people who work in the system, too, and who help people every single day and risk their lives to keep us safe. And it just feels really wrong to discriminate against them across the board like this. Most importantly, because I truly and deeply believe that by a member of law enforcement being in a space, they are actively making it unsafe for others in a community. Traditionally, and there is already so much evidence on it, so I'm not going to sit here and argue it with you, members of law enforcement massively unfairly target black people, people of color, the queer community, the neurodivergent, sex workers, and so on. And those are my people. Those are the people that sit in my chair. Every single one of those things describes the people in my chair, and I love them, and I want this space to be safe for them. So by inviting somebody who participates in law enforcement and uh, allowing that person access to the information they could get from just coming to see me and being around those types of people, it's not worth it to me. It is not worth risking the safety of my clients to have people like that in my space. Okay, now this is actually getting kind of offensive. Like this is is when you're so woke, you accidentally start agreeing with and, and sound like the actual racists and bigots. Did she really just suggest that being around a police officer makes an LGBT person unsafe? Is she meaning to suggest that we're more deviant or more likely to be criminal? And has she just totally forgotten about all the gay people who are police officers? I, I honestly have so many questions because even as a gay person, I have never felt unsafe around police. Does she, does she have like gay or trans people just casually, loudly confessing to committing crimes in her chair or something mid haircut? Same thing goes for race, as far as I'm concerned, although I can understand more why people of color might be uncomfortable around law enforcement, given the history between some of the communities. I still don't think a random person of color has anything to fear just by being in the same room as an off-duty officer, let alone a prison guard or, or something like that. That doesn't even make sense. Well, what's even the connection there? 
Anyway, I don't think most members of law enforcement are actively trying to find people with who they can arrest for no reason during their off hours. And most people, including people of color or LGBTQ people, haven't done anything wrong. You accidentally sound racist, babe. You don't have to agree with that. You absolutely don't. I have had a few gray area kind of things, um, like if somebody is married to a police officer, how fair is it to judge somebody for the actions of their spouse? That is a hard one. Currently, um, the only people I will not serve directly are members who have chosen to serve in law enforcement of some kind, but it has way less to do with my personal beliefs on the matter and more to do with my concern for the safety of the people that I have in my chair, because that is one of the most important things to me. I mean, I'm glad she doesn't also discriminate against the spouses of law enforcement, because that would be insane and has literally no logical basis whatsoever. A girl, I don't think they're going to want to patronize your services if they knew that you're discriminating against and openly disdain their spouses. Anyway, I have, I have more thoughts on this, so uh, bear with me, and I apologize if you lost some brain cells or feel like you got an audio lobotomy while watching that. I feel the same way. I feel the same way every time I react to these insane TikToks, but you enjoy my suffering, so here we are. Anyway, I do technically support her legal right to do this. If she wants to be a jerk, if she wants to discriminate against people based on what job they work, I do believe she has a right to do that. It's not dissimilar to, for example, a Christian cake baker who doesn't want to make a cake for a gay wedding, whose rights I've also defended because I want to live ultimately in a free society where people have freedom of conscience, even in the workplace. That said, I still think she's being unhinged and that it's absolutely unfairly discriminatory to just blanketly deny services to all law enforcement. She should be legally free to do it. We should also be perfectly free to criticize her or even boycott her for it too. And ultimately, you see this across the board in progressive online spaces, but there's something infantilizing and offensive and paternalistic about this white savior bit that seems to constantly suggest that minorities are just fragile people who need to be protected and shielded by the benevolent good white people like this chick. Minorities aren't actually made of glass. They're not hypersensitive or fragile, and you're not woke for treating them like infants. Anyway, what did you guys think of this TikTok video? And just so you know, you can always drop links to videos in the comments that you want me to react to in the future. Or run out for me because my brain is, is truly, I've incurred permanent brain damage. I've lost too many brain cells to count by suffering through TikTok for your entertainment. With that, that's it for today. Let me know what you think of this new series and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more and do consider hitting that like button. Always please comment with your thoughts. And with that, I'll see you all next time.